Wrangell St. Elias is the largest national park in the U.S., sizing up to approximately six Yellowstones in one, meaning it's huge. And despite of, or maybe because of, its size, it receives 98% less visitation than Yellowstone. Join us this week as we take in the sights of Wrangell St. Elias National Park from below and from above. Per usual, Penelope is the star of the show. What'd you say? It's dark in here. <laughs> <laughs> that was just incredible. About 180 miles north of the small fishing town of Valdez is Wrangell St. Elias. There are only two roads that lead you into the park, the Nebesna Road and the McCarthy Road. Both are long dirt roads that eventually dead end. We opted for the McCarthy Road, a 60 mile stretch of dirt road that runs along the bed of an old railroad and is notorious for causing flat tires. Along the road, there are no services besides one local who offers tire repair, and the road dead ends just before the two historic towns of McCarthy and Kennecott. Do you want your hat? All right, you guys almost ready? Penelope and I are taking a shuttle past McCarthy all the way to Kennecott. Evan is going to be riding his bike from there. We're going to hike to the route glacier until as far as penelope tells us we can go oh. i was not a fan of the previous glacier we oh yeah to. she's not a glacier dog i got on the shuttle and uh got dropped at the end but it's not really the end and i'm not really sure there's two ways that evan could ride his bike on the main road or on a side trail i'm not really sure where the two like intersect so I'm kind of just wandering around, hoping that I catch him at the right time. Okay, well, I found Evan. Turns out he took the main road, not the side trail that we thought we were gonna take. He was also confused because I got on the shuttle on the way here when he was still back at the car and there's he wasn't a, sure if I got on or not. There's a big break in communication. <laughs> I have she no- told me, She told me, go get dog treats. I went and got dog treat, treats and came back and, and she was completely gone. <laughs> Vanished, thin air. I have no cell service here and he has great service. Extended network, whatever that means. Okay, well, now we're headed to our hike. Turns out most of the trail down to the Root Glacier is rideable by the bike. So me and Melanie are just switching off, cruising, having a good time. And Nelly is saying we need to go faster. So we're making our final descent into the Root gl Glacier. On our way back, we'll take you through the Kennecott Mines, which we came through. But that Kennecott is like a really old mining town. Looks pretty cool and we'll show you that on our way back, but we wanted to rush out here and see Glacier. right along here in the middle of a giant piece of ice probably not good for skating but um, walking on it's not that hard I don't even know if you really need crampons or whatever these things are micro spikes I think we're definitely better off with crampons on really yeah we're well, not having to like be as focused on each step yeah maybe I guess Nelly's sliding a little bit but it's because I'm it's because she's got her uh, paws covered. First coming down through here does the mess. Over there. an hour 
and so far so good. It's this is it's like a little wonderland. You can just explore and find amazing blue pools and little waterfalls and rivers. And people are going way beyond where we went. But we don't want to put too much uh, strain on the dog's paws because this is, after all, ice. And she's only wearing booties on her front paws. So we're going to head back. Plus, we have something else going on tonight that we need to get back to. It's gonna be exciting. Per usual, uh, Penelope is the star of the show. I don't know if you guys have ever heard us say this, but being with her is like being with a famous person. They only greet her and they don't greet us. <laughs> we love that everybody gets so happy seeing her out on the trail and even more so out here on the glacier because I mean, you wouldn't expect it. And she looks real darn cute in her booties. Snacks on the rock. And there's the glacier. Wow. Yeah, that's all glacier. All this is glacier. All that is glacier. All of it. I don't think this is. But all that is. Even that's glacier. All right, we got back to Kennecott. We're just gonna show you around. It's a, uh, here's a house. And then we're gonna show you the mines and stuff. In 1900, copper was discovered between the Kennecott Glacier and McCarthy Creek. Shortly after, the Kennecott mine began operation. The mine ran for 30 years and extracted 200 million in ore, which made it the richest concentration of copper ore in the world. And fun fact, the town and mining company are actually spelled differently than the glacier they were named after. Because of a clerical error, the spelling of Kennecott was changed from K-E-N-N-I to K-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, and it remains that way. This post office was huge. I mean, so there's the front end, and then the back, there's some exhibits, but on that side is like the... Uh, grocery. The grocery store slash everything. They had like mountaineering equipment. Mm -hmm. Amazing how um, things change. We don't really even know the last time we sent a letter through the post office. If. When I had to get my tag renewed. <laughs> No bears in there yet. This is the first time I used an actual outhouse. What'd you say? It's dark in here. <laughs> <laughs> this pieced together vehicle is known as Rigor Mortis. Built by Jim Edwards in the 1950s, he took parts he found laying around town and assembled a vehicle that served him well through his time in McCarthy. It was last run in the 1990s. So, newsflash, we're going uh, flight scene. Yeah. Um, because we got refunded that very money, I was able to justify it in my heart. <laughs> Second time flight seeing, and we've heard that we, this one, yeah. if you're gonna go flight seeing, this is the place. All right, so show us the route, the poor man's route. Uh, I mean, poor would be in under. That's the route we're taking. It's, it's the, the cheapest, route. shortest route. And then this is the expensive route. No, the expensive route doesn't go there, baby. Oh, my bad. Yeah. It doesn't even go up there. Oh, we're part so, of the exclusive club, actually. You have to do, you have to do both. the Nazina Glacier, Rhone Glacier, Chimney Mountain, Mount Regal, the 1600 foot peaks of the University Mountain Range, Mount Blackburn, the 
Stairway Icefall, Erie Mine, Root Glacier, and Kennecott, and that's just to name a few. Our pilot pointed out even more landmarks that I can't remember. like blew the misty fjords out of the water and we saw some people camping down there <laughs> yeah the tents were this big in the glacier i mean the size compares you couldn't it, the tents looked like rocks that were colorful <laughs> <laughs> party rocks um Wrangell saint elias is just mind-blowing you can't wrap your head around the size we did a 50-minute flight scene yeah. tour that yeah, we did the shortest only one. Only, only went around here. And this other one, we, I don't even know. Well, I guess this mountain is huge. This mountain's 18,000 feet. And this one was the massive one, Yeah, in front the one we were next to was 16,390. And to top it off, this isn't all of Wrangell St. Elias. This is just the part that they do for their flight scene. We didn't see any sheep or bears, but they said sometimes you can see them, but they look like ants, so. Until next time. Good morning. I've been moved us to an amazing campsite, and this is your morning view. I didn't even know the water could get this calm. Are you feeling lighter? Ready to go. All right. What are, fun facts you learned in there about bears? Yeah, they can eat 200,000 soap berries a day. I'll have to show you what the soap berries are. After a pretty heavily uh, activity filled day yesterday, today we're gonna take it a little easy and go check out the small town of McCarthy and eat at the infamous potato. McCarthy sits five miles outside of the Kennecott mining town. It sprung up partly because alcoholic beverages and prostitution were forbidden in Kennecott in the early 1900s, but soon it grew to a full functioning town with a hospital, school, bar, and gym. In fact, it was the largest city in Alaska for a brief moment. Today, the population of McCarthy is around 28, but it is still one of the most well-preserved ghost towns in America. of our time in McCarthy, our time in Wrangell St. Elias National Park. We're going to head down to Valdez. Join us next week down in Valdez to watch the salmon runs begin and the sea lions feasting. They literally tear their heads off of these salmon. Go to Alaska, they said. <laughs> Endless hiking, so many vistas. The bugs are kind of bad, but you'll get through it. How do you feel? I mean, I've been bit on the forehead twice. How do you think I feel? Don't get that thing off of me. You can probably see it growing. He was bit on the forehead yesterday. He was bit on the forehead just now. And behind, and his, behind ear. his ear. Penelope stopped to poop. Swarmed by at least 30 mosquitoes. Which don't just like fly away if you swat at them. <laughs> and you can see where their bodies are full of blood. And then when you kill them, it's just a splatter of blood everywhere. We've gone through a lot of napkins. <laughs> I promise we're having fun in Alaska, but uh, next time we stop at an outdoor 
gear shop, we might be getting some bug nets for Evan's face. 